So um, today we're going to talk about 9D.1. So D is broken up into three parts. They all flow in very nicely from each other, but we'll just start with D1. Should be able to crank it out pretty quick and either work on some in 9C or spend some time on your folio. So uh, what we're talking about is a confidence interval. Again, we're going to perform the calculation, and then once it's done, I think I'll be able to best demonstrate what it means and what it's for. So um, we're just going to put the numbers in the formula. Okay, so we're performing a sample here. It says we've sampled, and this question goes over two pages. We've sampled 40 year 12 students. So we've got N is 40, and we observed our observed mean. Okay, so you can think of that as either X40, that's how we've been describing the sample from 40, or you can think of it as X bar, which means the sample mean. Okay, so the difference between X bar and mu is X bar is for a sample, mu is for a population. So the whole group, X bar for a, a, a selection of the whole group, a subset of the whole group. Um, and we've got mean is 178 centimetres, and we have a standard deviation of 8 centimetres. Okay, so using all that information, let's plug it into the formulas. We're going to have 178, take, 1.96 times 8 on the square root of 40 is less than the mean. 8 on the square root of 40. Alright, let's evaluate that. Okay, so this is the 95% confidence interval. Okay, so this is the formula for it. This is 95%. We do have different levels of confidence, but a bit more on that in a moment. And this value here, the 1.96, that dictates our level of confidence, okay? Now, because we've done a sample and we only did 40 people, we can say that we are 95% confident that the true population mean, that the value of the mean, is somewhere between 176 and 180 centimetres. Okay? So remember from the central limit theorem that the more people you sample, the, the, the bigger this value, the closer your estimate is going to be to the true mean. Now, of course that's true. If we think here, we've got standard deviation divided by the square root of n. As n gets larger, this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, both of these parts. And so it's narrowing in on the mean. It's getting closer and closer to the mean. So the more people you sample, the smaller that window is going to get. All right? Let's, let's flip the page, because there's, there's our calculation. Oh, does it say an interpret? An interpret. So let's make a statement about that. We are 95% confident that the population mean lies between 176 and 180 centimetres. <laughs> okay, come on, let's focus. Let's turn the page. We're at other levels of confidence. So the difference in the formula for other levels of confidence is rather than 1.96, they have written there this value called Z alpha on 2. Okay? So that's going to be some number and that's going to affect our level of confidence. Z alpha on 2. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we can determine this this value of Z alpha on two. We're gonna work that out first. What we do is we go into um, statistics. Let's go normal and inverse normal. And what the way we're generating that value, let, let me show you, this is the Z distribution 
And the z distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, doesn't it? You know, here's one, uh, minus one, here's positive one. Now, when we've said 1.96, okay, what that means is 1.96 standard deviations below the mean and 1.96 standard deviations above the mean generates a probability of 0.95 or 95%. So let's say we want to calculate the value of z alpha on 2 for 99%. The way we're going to do that is we're doing an inverse normal calculation. Um, so what are the details we have to bring in? Tail, area, and standard deviation and mean. So in statistics, distribution, normal, inverse normal. So our tail is going to be central because we, we want a calculation that's, uh, that's equal in both distances from the mean. So our tail is center, central. Our area, now we're saying we want to know the value for the confidence interval for 99%. So that means our area is 0.99. It's covering up 99, uh, 0.99 of the area available. Now for a Z standard de uh, a Z distribution, the standard deviation is one and the mean is zero. So let's put that information in. And that's where you've got uh, Z alpha on two equals 2.326. Okay. And so if you want to calculate the 99% confidence interval to say we're 99% confident, you're going to use that number where Z alpha on two is. That's how the formula changes. Okay, so you're just saying how much are we weighting it out? Go and look at mine. No, it's not the same. You four got different. Yeah, we have to put I got two point five seven. Wait, we're doing ninety nine or ninety eight percent? Yeah, you were talking I did about ninety nine. Yeah, was I talking about ninety eight? We're, do, we're okay. doing ninety nine. Yeah. I, I did put ninety nine in. Sorry. Yep. This is what two four. So if I put, you want me to put ninety eight in? If you put ninety eight in, we got two point oh five three seven. Uh, 98 is 2.2. Oh, my tail's pointing 2. left still. 2.3. Central. Oh, yeah, 98, I've got 2.32. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Sorry about that. 98, we've got 2.326. And 99, we've got 2.57. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be the digit that goes in this formula. Wait, is that okay. 2.57 each way? Or does it not matter? 2.57 each way, yeah. 2.57 standard deviation below and 2.57 above gives you 99 standard deviation. Yep. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's that question there. Find the 90% confidence interval and the 99% confidence interval. How does it compare? Well, we're going to do that, so, so we can do it using this formula, but it does take quite a lot, like there's a fair bit of important stuff, um, but there will be some questions that do require a bit of rearrangement. That's why we learn it, but we can also use a calculating technique where you just put the information in and it will pop out the interval for you. So that is listed on the sheet there. So we go in statistics, interval, Z interval, and first sample, and then we're going to put the information in. So let's follow that along. Menu, statistics, uh, Z. Is it INTR Z? Uh, yes, in INTR, then Z, then first sample. Data needs to be variable. Confidence level, how confident do you want to be? Well, let's do it for the 90% confidence interval first and then the 99% confidence interval. 100%. Uh, so that needs to be decimal by length, 0 0.9. Standard deviation is... Now we're talking back about, what's the question say? It's about the year 12s. We had a standard deviation of 8 centimetres for height and the mean was 178. So that's all the information in there and we'll get the interval. So I'm going to write these up. Can we have to put 40 for N? Yes, N is 40. Uh, sorry, I've put the mean. We have mean. Uh, we need X bar is 178 and the, and the N is 40. Yep, because we sample 40 students. So I'm going to list all three intervals up together. So first we've got the 90%. That's going to be this one. 0 0.9, 8, 178. 40. So if we go 90%, we go from 176 to 180. If we go 95, that's that one we had there, which is 176 to 180. There's different decimal places. 
and then if we go 99, less than 181. Okay, so it, maybe I'm not so interested in the 985 here because that doesn't exemplify it, but we've, we've calculated that already. So here's the 90% and here's the 99%. And what do we notice about the difference between them? What we notice is the more confident we become, okay, we want to be really confident, while the bigger we're going to throw the possible range of values. So if we want to say, I want to be absolutely certain, 99% confident, well, that's when you throw these values out so that it encompasses a really big value. Okay? Or I want I only want to be about 90% confident, don't need to commit too much to it. Well, that's where you've allowed 10% either way. Okay, so that's where we're generating that range. So that's enough to get into 9D.1. Let's give it a bit of a go. Come around, catch up with you. Thank you.